Hi there, I'm Rosemary Barton. Welcome to a special budget edition of At Issue. By exercising fiscal restraint, we're ensuring that we can continue to invest in Canadians and in the Canadian economy for years to come, just as we have done since 2015. Because we know that investments in Canadians are also investments in our economy. Finance Minister Christia Freeland says this budget is about fiscal restraint, but it's also a plan to help Canadians with affordability and invest in clean energy as a response to efforts in the U.S. The NDP is taking credit for both the expansion of dental care and the grocery rebate, guaranteeing their support. I'm really proud that we were able to force this government to expand dental care. There's things that we're not satisfied by, but we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do. So the Conservatives say there's too much spending and not enough relief for Canadians, and not surprisingly, they will not support it. This is an attack on the hardworking people of this country, and that is why Conservatives will be voting no. Instead. All right, let's bring in at issue on this Tuesday edition, Chantal Hebert, Andrew Coyne, and Althea Raj. Good to see you all. Um, Chantal, I'll start with you. Do, do you think this budget does show the, the fiscal restraint that, that Christian Freeland claims? Well, I've been looking for it. My colleagues who went in the lockup might have found it, but it's really hard to um, convince the average Canadian that was told last fall that the deficit uh, would fall to a certain amount and then to zero, and that today it's up by 10 billions and will not for the foreseeable future fall to zero, that there's a lot of fiscal restraint in there. Hmm. And so the colleagues that were in the lockup, Althea and Andrew, I'll start with you, Althea. Any, any signs of that did, did you see? Very, very little. And so in that way, this budget doesn't not match the rhetoric at all from last year's budget where she tried to put that forward. Um, there's a line item uh, where the government is going to spend less on consultants, on professional services from outside and on travel from the public service. That's about $7 billion. Then they're going to do a program review. Um, so th that's it, basically. So there's really not much belt tightening at all in this budget. Chantal is absolutely right. They have given up any pretext of talking about a return to balance. We're not seeing that at all. This is a very big spending budget and a very worrisome budget if you're worried about um, debt service payments crowding out the ability to pay for new services uh, in five years. $50 billion will be spent servicing the debt. That's more than what was spent to boost health care payments to the provinces. So it's consequential. Andrew? It's a little bit insulting to the intelligence to talk about fiscal restraint in terms of we're buying fewer paper clips. Uh, when, when you look at the actual spending track laid out in this budget versus just a year ago. So 12 months ago, mm -hmm. they issued a set of projections for the next five years. You compare them to the projections in this budget. In every year, on average, spending is about $20 billion more on program spending, more than just was projected last year, plus another $8 billion every year in additional interest costs on that, on that debt. And all of this money is borrowed. So no, this is not a fiscal restraint budget. I'm glad to see people are acknowledging it this time, because of course the trick they've played year after year is you issue that forecast with spending in the forecast range growing at two or three percent per year or less, and everyone goes, oh, well, that looks pretty restrained. It's just that every year the whole curve shifts up a few billion dollars, right. and in this case it's shifted up by more than $20 billion a year on program spending. So, so let's talk about the politics then. Why did the, the notion of, why was the notion of fiscal restraint important politically, Chantal, and why did it not happen uh, for the same political re or different political reasons? Opposite political necessities that the government is faced with. The first is uh, that the majority of Canadians are telling pollsters that they don't believe that the Liberals are good fiscal managers, that they manage the economy well. And so I think Christia Freeland's preferred headline would have been the one she tried to force today. This is a, a disciplined budget uh, on the fiscal front. But the other uh, political necessity is to keep the NDP happy. And to keep the NDP happy, they needed a budget that Jokmeet Singh could, as he did, brag about. Uh, yeah. literally putting himself in the role of co-author, which I think he deserves in this case, getting dental care, as, uh, this subsidy for groceries, taking credit for all of that. But if that's what you need to stay in government, uh, then you cannot at the same time hope for headlines that say that you were fiscally disciplined.
Bottom line, if yeah. anyone believed the liberals wanted an election this year, no, they desperately <laughs> did not want one. <laughs> that, I, that's probably a good takeaway, Althea. I would say it's not just about pleasing the NDP, though. In some ways, it's about making sure that this is not a government that uh, will be blamed for massive job losses uh, in manufacturing. So, so much sure. of this budget is really directed at addressing the threat that poses the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, a massive piece of legislation that was passed last August. Um, that at the time we were told was worth about 370, 390 billion dollars in, subsidi in subsidies to clean tech, uh, and that was going to be a big threat uh, for manufacturers here, especially in the automobile industry, for example. Uh, and we had to to match a, a certain level of subsidies that was being on offer in the U.S. And now we know that actually the subsidies in the U.S. Are worth a lot more than we originally thought, possibly as high as $1.2 trillion, which is a huge amount of money. Um, and we are doing something to try to play in that game. And it's also not mm -hmm. just the US, the Europe, Europe is doing yeah. uh, something similar with their Green New Deal. Um, and so there is going to be so much public spending to private companies to help, you know, achieve that net zero by 2050, but also to ensure that there are jobs, the jobs of the future are here, but also the jobs that are currently here stay here. And that that's the big part of the budget. Like in some ways, it's like that is on top yeah. of a normal budget because it's still yeah. a big spending budget. Yeah. So, Andrew, I know you don't like a subsidy per se, but what, what were what were what is the option for a government when when they see the United States and Europe doing these kinds of things and they want to try and remain competitive? Like, yeah. did, did they have a choice in this or, or sure. no? Yeah. There are there are two different ways of trying to make, remain competitive. One is to make yourself uh, competitive generally across the board, getting tax rates down, being more receptive to foreign investment, liberalizing uh, your markets, making them more competitive. There's all kinds of things you can do on that front that don't involve saying. God has decreed that we must be in the electric battery industry. Because for all the supposed pragmatism of people who, who say we have to subsidize these, these, these industries, they'll say, be practical, we have to subsidize these industries. Mm -hmm. What they really have said is, it's an a priori certainty that that is an industry of the future, that that is the industry that Canada has comparative advantage in, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, that's not the case. What is actually achieved by ladling out, out all these subsidies it isn't that we win that battle. We just get ourselves basically the right to go on subsidizing. What I fear greatly we're doing with these industries now is creating permanent subsidy sinkholes where we have to keep on subsidizing them year after year after year to quote unquote keep them in the game mm. with the U.S. willingness to subsidize them year after year after year. And of course the U.S. has much deeper pockets than we do. So if any country is going to run out of money first, it's not going to be them. Yeah, to Althea's point. But but there's politics involved in that too, Chantal, like for, for the government to contrast itself against the conservatives who, who do not believe in, in, I don't know if they believe in this kind of spending, but they certainly have issues around the way the government approaches clean energy. Yes, uh, and the conservatives up to a point uh, have a, a, a rhetoric that runs counter to what their allies, their conservative allies are actually doing. I'm sure Premier Ford in Ontario likes this budget yeah. uh, and I'm convinced many other premiers will like it. Why? Because it allows them to uh, create jobs, to make those announcements uh, that make governments, provincial governments look good at the expense of the federal government. And for the conservatives to say they don't like this is one thing. But at some point, they're going to have to answer the other question. So you would go to balance deficits, uh, balance books. You would cut taxes. What programs would you mm -hmm. cut? And how many jobs would you lose in the process? Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the trap that is hidden in this uh, budget politically. 20 seconds to Althea and Andrew. Althea? Well, one of the measures that is in this budget is the government basically wants to tie the hands of a future government by guaranteeing businesses a price on carbon. And so if uh, a new government comes in, a conservative government that doesn't believe in a price on carbon, they, those companies would have to be financially mm -hmm. compensated. And I frankly do wonder if Pierre Polyev is actually thankful for such a measure because it would give him an out. Andrew? Well, the other approach you could take would be to lay out his own growth agenda. If the government is not going to bring forward a, a serious agenda for promoting economic growth, that's something the conservatives could do in opposition. And while they're usually loath to put out their own policies, in this, in this case, it might be a way of getting out of that trap that uh, Chantal mentioned. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you coming in on a Tuesday. I'll see you on Thursday.